welcome to the pre-snap podcast presented by line star all things fantasy football with a little sports betting analysis as well alongside tyler weeman i'm shannon somerville on today's show dfs sleeper picks and chalk plays plus we will have touchdown calls prop bets and our best bets of week six tyler week six coming up we've got some great matchups Bills Chiefs, a rematch of last year's divisional round, which ended in overtime. It was a thrilling game. Some even calling it the best game ever. Uh, if we get a game like that again, we will be very lucky. We got Cowboys Eagles. Mm-hmm. And of course, the one everyone is looking forward to Packers Jets. Yes. <laughs> we also have Seahawks Cardinals. That's a which good, okay. Second the Geno highest, Smith show. It is the second highest game total on the slate. Wow. So, so got a lot of great matchups. Mm-hmm. We'll get to our daily fantasy projections. First, though, we've got to say congratulations to a Line Star subscriber, Zach, who had a mm-hmm. takedown in week five. Got to congratulate him. A great lineup there with Josh Allen. Oh, we talked about him we did on talk the about show. Him. So talked about Chubb. Yeah. We talked about a few people on there. So congrats, Zach, for the takedown. I do notice that your avatar on DraftKings is LSU. They could Uh-oh. use a f- few takedowns of their oh, own. Oh, boy. I'm just saying. I'm an, you know, I'm an SEC Georgia words. Bulldogs. Those are fighting words. <laughs> well, I do appreciate another SEC fan as well. Congrats, Zach, on your big victory. You can take that up with him in the line star <laughs> chat. Clee Kid 92 is always there. <laughs> If you want to start winning contests in DraftKings, FanDuel, and Daily Fantasy, make sure to sign up for LineStar, linestarapp.com. It'll help you everything you need to dominate fantasy, our our lineup optimizer, props edge tool to help you also dominate in sports betting as well. Make sure to check it out, linestarapp.com. Now it's time for our Daily Fantasy Projections. Let's go. Starting off with quarterback, once again, Josh Allen is on the list and a chalk play for this weekend in week four going up against the Chiefs. Now, Allen had 466 total yards against the Steelers and four touchdowns. He didn't even play the entire fourth quarter. Now facing a Chiefs team where their Achilles heel is their pass defense. Mm -hmm. What do you see for Allen in week six? I mean, we have the highest game total of the week here bills have a good shot of putting up 30 plus points like they do every Mm -hmm. single week and this week they have a a team that can kind of match them Mm -hmm. with points however i think it is going to be a little hard for uh kc to fully keep up they just don't quite have the same level of weapons but allen is in a great spot he's going to keep passing regardless of what kc or what any other team does so like we have said weekly on this show Mm -hmm. is he's a play every single week, but especially in a week where we have a 53 point game total or, or higher. And the chiefs are allowing the second highest completion percentage in the NFL right now. I know we saw a pretty good performance from them in Monday night football Mm -hmm. against the Raiders. However, there were some big plays, especially Mm Devontae Adams had a good game in that one as well. You know Josh Allen's got some good receivers as well. Yeah, he does. The other thing to bring up is his rushing upside really comes up in the Mm -hmm. closer games, the games that mean a little bit more, Mm -hmm. and this is going to be one of them. I didn't think Allen would rush much versus Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, but versus KC, he will. Now, uh, on the other side of that matchup, you've got Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. Now, for the first time in his career, he is a home underdog pretty mm-hmm. outrageous in this one he had four touchdowns on monday right. night 292 yards oh yeah those four touchdowns went to the same person travis kelsey now going up at right. bill's defense that is really good basically top 10 in just about every category including fourth fewest yards allowed given that though mahomes is still mahomes Yes, Mahomes is still Mahomes. Bills still haven't played that great of competition. Mm -hmm. The Rams obviously aren't who we thought they were. Right. Outside of that, the teams they've played haven't been super good. Mahomes is Mahomes. He is the best quarterback in the game. His weapons, there may be a little more desired there, but he is going to figure out how to get it done. And historically, Mahomes is usually done like at halftime. Mm -hmm. You know, he's usually where kind of Allen was last week, where at halftime he's got 
three, four touchdowns, a bunch yeah. of yards, and then he just doesn't really have to do much in the second half. He, it's not going to be that way this year. Mm-hmm. Definitely not in this game. So it's a game where Mahomes could have to keep throwing throughout the entire game right. and just kind of speedboat uh, the Bills to see who can win. And at this low, low of ownership, I think it's very interesting to go to Mahomes instead of Allen. Great game either way. And a, yes. maybe a little revenge tour for Josh Allen. I, yeah. Could, uh, put the pedal to the metal in this one. Raising that game total, which we like to see for fantasy purposes. Next up, we're taking a look at quarterback Kyler Murray going up against the Seattle Seahawks in this one. And he had 292 total yards and a touchdown versus Philly. Now, the Philly defense is great. They allow the third fewest yards in the NFL. This week, he gets an even better matchup. Actually, a much better matchup going up against the Seahawks that allow 430 yards per game. That's the most in the NFL. So in a good spot. You mentioned earlier that this is one of the higher game totals. Mm -hmm. What does this mean for a fantasy perspective? So for a fantasy perspective, obviously the higher game total Mm -hmm. is just more likely there to be offense. And that's the case here. Seattle has a terrible defense. They keep getting in shootouts Mm -hmm. partially because one, their offense can create big plays and their defense is allowing big plays. So you get that combo and shootouts just kind of happen. Most of the ownership is going to probably go on Geno Smith in this. Mm -hmm. However, Kyler Murray on the other side is going much lower owned. He has really good weapons. You can throw in, you know, say a Lockett or Metcalf on the other side. And you could potentially get a lot of the Seahawks points also. So I like the idea of stacking Kyler Murray. Right. Kyler Murray, there you have it. No Geno? Gino's been crushing I, it this season. He, Gino is absolutely under underpriced. He's just a little higher owned, and I like the ownership mm-hmm. on Kyler more. All right. Let's look at our running backs now. And at the top of the list here, we've got Ramondre Stevenson mm-hmm. going up against Cleveland. Now, he has a 4.24 yards after catch, which is the second best in the NFL right now. Damian Harris missing some time with a hamstring injury. That's good news for Stevenson. Mm-hmm. And the Browns defense um, averaging 138 rushing yards per game allowed, which is the fifth most. So whoever's in the backfield for the Patriots will benefit from this matchup. Yeah, Stevenson has some data that really shows that he is an elite rusher in this league. He looks great. Likely no Damian Harris. He mm-hmm. was – Harris was limited in practice today, so we should note that. And – Having him here in this high ownership is likely everybody expecting Harris to be out. So that does change if Harris miraculously mm-hmm. gets better and plays this week. But without him, uh, Stevenson is underpriced. It's a poor Cleveland D. Eckler just smoked them, and I would expect Stevenson to do, do the same. What are you expecting from Seattle Seahawks running back Kenneth mm-hmm. Walker going up against the Cardinals? Week five was the best of the year for him. Eight carries for 88 yards and a touchdown. This Arizona defense hasn't allowed a single rusher, though, over 70 yards. What do you make of his matchup? So, first of all, there is no Rashad Penny. Unfortunately, we, <laughs> we, uh, we cursed him last week by betting <laughs> on him in the prop show. He ended 1.5 yards. Right, short of our prop. Short of our prop. Due to a broken fibula. So I hope you get better, Penny. Walker is expected to be thrust into the full-time workhorse role. So that is why ownership is here. However, we don't fully know. So just take that under consideration. We could have DJ Dallas getting a little bit. Uh, They also added uh, Tony Jones, who could get some work here. So we don't fully know the workload. It is expected. It's Walker. He is way underpriced if he is getting kind of like what Penny got uh, in the weeks prior, that like 70% snap share area. Uh, he is super talented, was a high draft pick. He should do well. It's a high high scoring game. Uh, so the only question mark here is, is it going to be him getting all the workload or not? You know who else should have a good week? Mm-hmm. J-E-T-S running back Brees Hall going up against the Packers. Hall's coming off the best game of the year, yes. for best career game for him. He had 100 receiving yards, 97 rushing yards, and a touchdown. 
Also, those 18 carries were the most of the year for him. Mm -hmm. Like to see those usage yeah. numbers increasing in the Packers defense. Ninth most rushing yards, two running backs. So in a great spot, and we've seen him get better and better every week. Yeah. You pretty much carried most of the notes that I had kind of <laughs> there. So, Sorry. <laughs> but, but it's, I absolutely agree. He has been a complete beast there. The other thing to add is even though that Green Bay is heavy favorites, you usually don't like to take a running back in a game where they're expected to be playing from behind. However, Brees Hall is an excellent pass catcher, as you saw last week, 100 receiving yards. And with that, he could be game script proof so it really doesn't matter which mm -hmm. way this game goes he's going to get receptions and yards if you know green bay gets out to an early lead which we have not seen out of this green bay team yet mm -hmm. uh so i i like hall either way and until his price comes up i'm going to be playing him i like to hear that as a jets fan I J E T S. see i get I excited about do. my my running back there uh and then one other note okay. just to throw in mm -hmm. real quick uh the arizona situation is a little murky right now james connor left the game last week daryl williams is already out for this week so you know benjamin could be in a great spot with okay. a massive workload and he's just way underpriced so nice little sleeper pick there yeah. keep an eye on that one let's get to our wide receivers seems like every week we're talking about rams yeah. wide receiver cooper cup this week going up against the panthers his 49 receptions leads the league mm -hmm. and he is actually on pace for 100 receptions by week 10, which is just incredible. Crazy. <laughs> He's caught, caught all but one of Matt Stafford's touchdown passes. Yeah. And the Panthers, that situation, it's going to be interesting to see because they just fired their head coach, Matt Rule. What do you expect from Cooper Cup this week against the Panthers? I do expect the Panthers to play a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think the locker room was really behind Rule, so they may be now. However... It's Cooper Cup versus a very average defense. If you have the money, absolutely mm -hmm. pay up for him and play him. He's in a good spot. I don't think this defense is good enough to slow him down. He's the favorite target for Stafford, without a doubt. Another favorite target is Bucks Mike Evans mm -hmm. going up against the Steelers this week. Bucks. That pass-heavy offense seems to be back in full force. Last week, 351 yards for Tom Brady and Evans. 81 yards on the day. Steelers have allowed 220 receiving yards per, per game. That is the worst in the NFL. We saw it in week five where Josh Allen absolutely mm -hmm. torched the Steelers. Do you expect Mike Evans to be the beneficiary of another torching situation against Pittsburgh? I do. So he is absolutely their kind of deep threat. We saw Diggs and Gabe Davis be able to beat the Steelers deep repeatedly. I expect we see Evans to do that. And then on top of that is Godwin came back last week, but he only played 52% of the snaps. And if that keeps happening, say Godwin's up to 60% mm -hmm. this year. It means Evans is the guy on the field most of the time that he's out there. And so I really like uh, Evans. How about Cincinnati Bengals' Tyler Boyd going up against the Saints mm -hmm. this week? And he's kind of had a bit of a lack of opportunity. Just four targets in week five for 32 mm -hmm. yards. Going up against a New Orleans defense, though, that's allowing 177.4 yards per game. That is eighth most in the NFL right now. What do you like about Tyler Boyd's situation from a fantasy point of view? So first of all, he's going to get the Tyler bump. Oh, <laughs> we love that. Uh, and then T Higgins left the game last week with a knee injury. He had the knee injury coming into the game, re aggravated it. And so if Higgins doesn't play, he has missed practice all week, then Tyler Boyd's going to get a big bump up in targets. I love Tyler Boyd at this price in this matchup. The Saints could be without Marshawn Lattimore, mm -hmm. their best defensive back. And in that case, you know, I like both Chase and Boyd. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give the bigger bump to Boyd just because of where his price is. Uh, but as a as a whole, I like this game, especially if Lattimore is out because there's Chris Olave on the other side with Michael Thomas and mm -hmm. Landry both possibly out again. And Jameis Winston could be back. 
Well, we're going to keep it with that game then as we mm-hmm. look at our tight ends. The first tight end we're looking at is Bengals tight end, Hayden Hurst, going up against the Saints. And he's coming off a career high of the game, mm-hmm. 53 yards. He's had a touchdown in each of the last two games. And this Saints defense is meh. They rank 16th mm-hmm. in reception or receiving yards per game allowed. What do you make of Hurst's situation? Yeah, so in in games where Hurst does not have a questionable tag, he's averaging 7.3 targets per game. He's super cheap, and the Bengals may be without their second option here. So I really like Hurst to get an eight-plus targets this week. And at his price point, it's really hard not to go there. How about going to Cardinals? tight end Zach Ertz he's going up against the Seahawks and he's got 28 receptions on the season 41 targets which is fourth most in the Mm -hmm. NFL and Seattle allowing the second most receiving yards two tight ends this season what do you make of Ertz yeah this is an interesting one for me so with the tight end Ertz has been an absolute tiger or target monster Mm kind of like uh, Tyler Higby, however, Higby mm-hmm. is getting all of the credit for being a target monster, while really Ertz is just right there with him. Ertz is less owned and gets that Seattle matchup, which we know has been awful versus tight ends. Mm-hmm. They've allowed a ton of big plays to tight end. They let Hawkinson have that big game. They uh, Troutman had a decent game last week and Tyson Hill last week. They've allowed other big tight end games. I really like this spot for Ertz. All right, so some great plays there at tight end. Now let's take a look at our defenses that we might want to play in daily fantasy if you're playing season-long fantasy. Maybe these are some good streaming options for you. The Panthers going up against the Rams. Mm -hmm. And, man, how far they have fallen this Mm -hmm. season top offense last year this season that offense is really struggling for the Rams just 300 yards per game which ranks 26 not only that but they're also giving up a ton of sacks 21 sacks and seven interceptions Matt Stafford's kind of always thrown a lot of interceptions a great spot for the Panthers though if they can pull through without their head coach after he got fired Yeah, it's a decent spot. I don't love this play, though. Panthers are coming in high-owned here. The terrible offensive line does give the Rams or the Panthers Mm -hmm. a nice floor there. But as a team, they haven't shown much ability to get get after the passer. So that does worry me. They don't create a ton of turnovers either. Uh, And they're the way game. I usually like to focus on home teams you know that are cheap the panthers are at least cheap Mm -hmm. so i won't say like you know totally fade them but at their ownership i think there's some other places you can go speaking of other places then let's look at the saints going up against the bengals the game you've highlighted throughout Mm -hmm. the show new orleans defense 16th in yards per game allowed bengals 22nd in yards per game the o-line really struggling and 19 sacks allowed which is fourth most we've seen burrow getting sacked all season long so i mean the saints are in a decent spot they are in a decent spot they're home home team low scoring game Bengals have a poor offensive line possibly no higgins Mm -hmm. so i see some paths to where the saints d could be good the other thing is that we've talked about uh hearse being a higher own tight end I would, would assume if Higgins out, Chase is probably a higher-owned wide receiver. Boyd probably will be, too, in that case. And so you could get some leverage here as going with the Saints D as well. So a lot of leverage in our daily mm-hmm. fantasy projections and picks for today. For all of that information, make sure to check it out, linestarapp.com. We have your lineup optimizer, your props edge tool, every stat you can imagine just all in one place. Check it out, linestarapp.com. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, be sure to like this video. If you're liking the content we're coming out with, be sure to subscribe to our channel and sign up for notifications as well. We've got a lot of shows like props shows where a lot a lot of times the lines change. So you want to be signed up for those notifications so you can get in on those bets right away. Now it's time for our touchdown calls of week six. Tyler, who you got for an anytime touchdown in week six? I'm going with the good old Patriots running back, Ramondre Stevenson. He is an absolute beast. Mm-hmm. ton of advanced metrics show that he is a legit 
very good running back, and it is his his ball to carry. Mm-hmm. It is his time to shine. Damian Harris is out. I think he's getting an end zone this week. I'm going with a Bills wide receiver, Stephon Diggs. I think he's finding the end zone in this one. He's got five touchdowns that rank second in the NFL among wide receivers. He leads the league with 10 red zone targets. And that Kansas City defense has struggled in the past defense, ranks 29th in DVOA, which is defensive adjusted value over average. That takes into account the quality of opponent. Stephon Diggs finding the end zone in this one. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a shootout in Kansas City at Arrowhead. Very well could be. Let's take a look now at our prop bets for week six. Tyler, who do you got for your prop bet? Well, you know, we talked about the head coach being fired Mm -hmm. i'm going with christian mccaffrey over 98.5 rushing plus receiving yards cmc has been over this in four or five games this year the line star projection is for 107 the rams are allowing 110 yards so and cmc isn't your average running back i would expect him to hit over fairly easily like he has in every other game this week except Um, for week one mm -hmm. which baker forgot he was there so (laughs) i am going to a running back as well and the jets certainly don't forget that he's in their backfield i'm going over 75.5 receiving and rushing yards now He's averaging 55 rush yards and 42.6 receiving yards coming off a monster game versus Miami, 97 yards rushing, 100 yards receiving. The Jets have also been increasing his carries each week. This week, his matchup is against the Green Bay Packers, who've allowed the opposing lead rusher uh, to have at least 85 yards in four of five games. Brees Hall going over 75 and a half rush and receiving yards. I like it. J-E-T-S, baby. (laughs) Although, uh, you know, for our next segment, we're doing, you know, best bets of week six. And it crossed Mm -hmm. my mind to perhaps pick the Jets once again. I picked them last week. However, I'm not going against Aaron Rodgers at home. Forget it. He hasn't lost at home in over a year. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Rodgers. Especially coming off that loss to Giants. Oh, yeah. He's going to be pissed. Even worse than facing uh, Aaron Rodgers at Lambeau Field, facing an angry Aaron Rodgers (laughs) at Lambeau Field. Did you see that Daniel Jones, after the game, (laughs) asked Aaron Rodgers if he's okay? What? No, I did (laughs) not. They went to shake hands, and he's like, are you all right? (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, What are you doing, Jones? He uh, took that really well. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So let's get into our best bets for week six. Tyler, who are you backing for week six? I'm going with a home home underdog, the Seattle Seahawks plus three versus Arizona. I really don't think Arizona is that good of a team. They start slow every single week. And this Seahawks team is much better than we all thought. (laughs) Geno Smith has been playing great. He's taken Russell Wilson's spot, maybe even a little bit more. I think Seahawks plus three, him taking it. I'm taking the Cowboys plus six against the Eagles. A little upset in Philadelphia in this one. The Cowboys defense is having a phenomenal season. In fact, the last time the Cowboys defense held opponents to less than 20 points through the first five games was 1972. Tyler, gas prices in 1972 were 36 cents. How would you love those gas prices? Pretty Man, good. It'd be nice. <laughs> too bad that was well before I was born. <laughs> Me too. So Philadelphia, actually, they've had an incredible start, undefeated 5-0 and right now, but their strength of schedule ranks 28th. The only defense they faced that is top 15 in terms of yards per game allowed was the Jags this season. So they really haven't faced many top defenses like the one they will see against the Cowboys. One thing to note here is Jalen Hurts' passer rating in a clean pocket is 109.5. Under pressure, that falls to 59.1. Well, the Cowboys, they lead the league with 60 quarterback pressures. Watch out for, like, linebacker Micah Parsons in this one. He's been an absolute wrecking force against all of these uh, quarterbacks, including Matt Stafford last week. He's just been able to get after quarterbacks every single week. Cowboys, I'm saying, hand the Eagles their first 
awesome this season. Whoa. Not only are you just taking the points, you're going money, you're money line? line in this one. Oh, boy. Did it last week. It paid off. So Yeah. I, I think Seahawks, you could take money line, too. I, it's, you know, I'm kind of leaning. Now I'm thinking about it. You're, should I take the spread? Just, it's in Philadelphia, so now I'm having second thoughts. But you know what? Whatever. Oh, all right. We're going, going money line. For it. We're I just like going it. for it. I like it. <laughs> All right. All of that information that we went over today, available at LineStarApp.com. Make sure if you're watching us on YouTube right now, like this video if you're enjoying our content and subscribe to our channel, sign up for notifications. And yeah, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. We will get back to you. And like, if you have any questions about prop bets, anything, daily yep. fantasy. We're here. Or if you want to, let's go, you know, talk about gas prices in 1972. Whatever. Yeah, if you want to do that, that's cool. <laughs> Good luck in all your daily fantasy this weekend and your prop betting, sports betting, all of your betting endeavors. Good luck. Mm -hmm. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, guys. Bye.